Father, I thank you that, God, I love this church and I love the people here. Father, I thank you for just even connections today with old friends, with my friend Sherry, Lord God, who's been a faithful woman of God and who's walked so many things through. I thank you that you, things, you never leave things undone. You never leave things undone, God. You always restore. And it may look like we're surrounded at times, even in this nation, but, and even in the nations right now with the things that are going out, but we cling to you. And we thank you that your presence is more than a fairy tale today. It's a reality in this service. It's a reality in our lives. So Jesus, we thank you that this church is being enlarged with the presence of God and stretching forth the tent pegs. And we thank you today, Lord God, that you give us a foretaste of heaven on earth. We're not bags packed ready to go. We actually want to see heaven on earth. We want to see the open heaven in our daily life, whatever that means. And everybody said... Amen. So in Matthew 6, it actually, in in verses 9 to 10, um, it actually says, Pray like this, Our Father, dwelling in the heavenly realms, may the glory of your name be the center on which our lives turn. Now that's the first, my first point today, the glory, dwelling in the heavenly realms. And we know that everything in heaven's great. If, you know, we've lost two people in the last couple, a month, um, one with a cancer, one young boy with a cancer, and one of our oldest saints in the church, Jean Miller, died this last week of a of a cancer that she outlived all of the um, the proclam- you know the diagnose prognosis of it went to be with glory. And actually, there was no this young man that had this very um, rare cancer, Ewing sarcoma, was ready to go to Jesus in the end. He's saying, "Don't pray for him more. I'm out of here." And it was incredible how this, in this day and age, there is, there is more of an open heaven and a nearness to heaven than in days past. If you'd lose someone, the grief was so strong. But there's almost a sense of heaven on earth in the church where you know they're all dancing around in glory and we, it won't be long before we see them. Amen? And it's actually, it's, it's as past as we see this, we do funerals, we do the, you know, these things where people, uh, it's, it's tragic circumstances, and yet that grief, the sting of death has been crushed by Jesus. And you feel that in the atmosphere in these situations which could actually break people. And yet there is a sense, and that is the open heaven. That is the open heaven when you actually know that that what is in heaven is coming to earth. And actually, not only that, you know that those that have gone to heaven are witnesses of all that God is doing. So the sting of death is being broken. And we're going to have to understand that in this day and age. We cannot be crushed by these things. So he says, dwelling in the heavenly realms, may the glory of your name be the center on which our lives turn. And that's my first challenge to you and to myself today is is the glory of his name, the center on which our lives turn. And this has got to be something that we have to discipline ourselves in. Jesus has to be center in our lives in 2020. There has to be a, a, a practice of his presence on a daily basis that actually we don't just come to church on Sunday and we try and get back to him as the center. People have no tr- trouble with making Jesus the center on a Sunday But the nitty-gritty is the center in our everyday lives, isn't it? We all know that. We battle. In this country, honestly, I salute you because there is so much that you have to do. There's so far to travel. There's so much to do. There's so much required that Jesus to be the center takes a discipline but also a supernatural walk. So whether you're on the train or whatever you're doing, you might not get your quiet time here. Hands up if you do. Get your quiet. No, don't show me good girl, but you can do that walking to the school or whatever. It's a, it's a practicing of the presence of Jesus, isn't it, in your life. That sets you free because you actually don't have the time sometimes to do that. And then he goes on to say, manifest your kingdom realm and cause your every purpose to be fulfilled on earth as it is fulfilled in heaven. Now, that's a powerful statement and one I don't know if we believe, but it says that we're going to the church, God wants to manifest his kingdom realm and cause every purpose to be fulfilled 
for your life on the earth. Now, that's powerful, isn't it? And, and we actually have to choose to believe that today because when we look at our lives, sometimes we battle with that. But it manifests your, your kingdom realm, cause your every purpose to be fulfilled just as it's fulfilled in heaven. And that actually takes it to the height of godly excellence is that the purpose in your life to be fulfilled as it is in heaven is pretty incredible, isn't it? So whatever God, as it is in heaven, um, so would it be. And then lastly, it says, we acknowledge you as our provider of all we need each day. And this is, I think, where the stress comes in in these times. This very statement, we acknowledge you as our provider of all we need every day. So that's not just financial. That is emotional, social. It's everything that you need for life. Part of, of seeing the kingdom manifest is acknowledging him. So, you know, just thinking about this and looking at life and just being in ministry, we, you know, I see that people battle with these concepts of heaven on earth. We battle to really truly believe. We know that one day it's all going to be good up there when we go to glory. But life can be so hard that we actually can battle to believe for the kingdom to be released and manifest. Am, am I talking to the, you know, you actually, it's, it really is. And we somehow don't see that something so powerful as the kingdom realm, which Jesus preached, as heaven on earth can be chosen, pursued, and released within you and within me. Because we have unbelief. Like, you know, you start, I've actually looked at my own mind in the last year, just looking at things where you knew the miraculous needed to kick in. And your first reaction is unbelief. Ever Anybody notice that? You know, things, we've had things that have happened, and my first reaction is, that's not going to happen. Because we are so filled with unbelief because of the, we are under the as it is of this world, not the as it is in heaven. Do you know what I'm saying? There are two as it is today. And I'm, I'm, this is the title of my preach. As it is, question mark. And we are faced with that. I mean, you're faced with that sitting here. God wants this church to be overflowing. There's nothing stopping anything. You've got everything that you need today, provision-wise, to look after the lost within this small group of people. But the as it is in the world is, this is not... It's not worth it. It's not, you know, we can't do it. The as it is in the world is such a reality to our minds that it's the first stop instead of the as it is in heaven. And I want you to think about your life today because everything that you do, and this week I want you to just do that as, as a, just a measure in your life of where you're at. Because I can tell you right now, my first not, my first as it is has not been heaven all the time. It's definitely a reaction as it is in my world. And so, you know, we often explain away, and I've seen this um, in the body of Christ, we explain away a lack of the miraculous. We explain away the lack of the power of God, right, you know, in the church because we are actually moved by the as it is in this world. And, you know, Jesus didn't say this, and God was speaking to me this as I, we came into the year and uh, as a, in a fast, and... Um, you know, that often that's the time when God does speak to you because you're so jolly hungry, you actually just spend some more time. Amen? Uh, and um, I know Charlene was sending me all her vegetarian recipes during our fast. She really took it to another level. Um, but Jesus didn't say, people pray this. Now listen to this in the contrast. And take this into your life, your marriage, your family, your business, and your church day. As it, this, this, he didn't say, pray this. Our Father, holy is your name. As it is in my family and how it's always been. Poverty, sickness, strife, divorce, patterns of life. He doesn't say, as it is in your nation, United Kingdom. That's how it's always going to be. He doesn't say, as it is for my anxiety and depression, that is how it will be. We're, we're looking at the as it is in contrast today. It doesn't say as for the children of this nation because, you know, there's an anointing on you as it, you can hear that today. It was so powerful. Well done, girl. Well done for that. It's Friday nights. This key here, you know, if you look at the as it is over the children of this nation, you get to a place, and I've just been into Australia now, there's no need for God. Life is so good in a humanistic society that there's no need for God. 
So your children are educated well. They do their sports. They do all of this. It's no, it's no as it is in heaven. It's as it is. We're going to make it as it is in this world. And that one faithful thing can reach the future of this nation. Few kids who get to know Jesus, English children who get the as it is in heaven, not the as it is in my world. Because it's strong. That thing is strong. And in this nation, it's a strong thing over the way things should be. The, the way things appear. And the kingdom of God is in total opposition to that. In fact, it will cause an uproar there. Amen? Which is why, you know, you've already had to deal. I know with parents, you get children who are born again, and you have to explain away the what does salvation mean to people who are atheists, who don't know God, and who don't want their kids going into some kooky cult. And so you see this contrast and this war the whole time. You know, it doesn't say... Jesus didn't say, pray, oh, as it is in this world that is lost and seemingly under the kingdom of darkness, including the coronavirus at this moment. I mean, that's an example. As it is, what do we believe today about that? As it is in the world, sickness and viruses, or as it is in the kingdom of God. It's time for us to release the as it is in heaven of healing into the nations, not think this is judgment or this is that or this is my, listen, somebody sent me something this morning the conspiracy theories come out. This could be true, I don't know, but it's a man-made virus or whatever. And it really doesn't matter right now because people are dying. And so we see the as it is in heaven is health and healing into that situation. It's for a nation right now to, to get the cure. That's the as it is in heaven. The highest order of heaven is healing. So we pray that right now. Amen. Do you agree with me? For that for that thing to be found that would combat it. That's the as it is. You know, people have got so many religious things, but when heaven comes down, it will bring health into that situation and give the people with those incredible brains the breakthrough technology for that. These are the days that we're living in, this contrast of the as it is in the world. And Jesus also didn't say, try and believe to get through this life one day at a time and you'll get to heaven and you'll get it all. I mean, obviously, we're in a fallen world and life is, I don't know if you've noticed this, but life is, we're living in last days. You know, we really are living in the last days. So we're not living in a spiritual utopia. We, every day we see the fallenness of our lives of people around us. Am I right? So we know, we know that we only see, um, we don't see clearly yet. We see through that thing, but it's still just a touch of the he of open heaven is enough to get us through. You only have need a little touch of heaven in your life to see bondages break, to see breakthrough, to see salvations, to see that God's presence in our homes and our health and our lives and our children and our children's children, and we start to see what we were born to live for, not the as it is. And, you know, the wonderful thing about God, and I'm so thankful for this, is where that you live or what you've done in your past does not determine the as it is in heaven for you. Anybody grateful for that as well? Because right now, today, whatever I can receive by faith, even in my brokenness, is what I'm going to receive. And so I think there's a contrast this year that we're coming into where we're actually seeing that we know that heaven is bulging to release the purpose of God into the earth, salvation to many, the multitudes without God, to see breakthrough, to see his kingdom established. But at the same time, we're not fighting before. We're too tired to fight like we did before. There's an element of rest in receiving the kingdom. And, that, and I want to speak that over you today. And I've seen this while well, I was literally, I think Simon will touch on it next, next week with a powerful word that he gave about Psalm 23, when he makes us lie down in green pastures. <laughs> you know, he says he, he makes you lie down in green pastures, which, um, and actually Simon, when I was halfway through my sabbatical, he sent me this message. It was a day I was struggling, and because I go through this process of letting go, and he said, he makes you lie down in green pastures, and restoration comes out of that, and there's nothing you can do. 
And if you, you know, you notice today that we don't have enough power to blow the fuzz off a peanut or whatever the old saying is, or I don't, I don't even know if that's a saying you say here, but the power of God is within our rest today in situations where there's a, there is, as we rest in him and we are restored, there is an anointing and a power release that we have not known before. And there's no amount of striving that's going to get it. No amount of flesh, no amount of doing all the right thing. It's actually moving into a place of rest and faith that God is who he says he is and he's good. And he is a God of favor. And no amount of me just ticking the boxes in this year, 2020, I'm going to be obedient, yes. I'm going to be obedient. I'm going to lie down because some, we have some very naughty sheep that won't lie down. And you've probably been one sometime. You, you know, lying down and letting go after you've been fighting all your life for certain things is hard. And, um, you know, we, we could be fighting and it, it could be a relational thing. It could be a financial thing. It could even be, and I'm, I'm looking at, you know, I would count myself as a warrior in the kingdom. I know how to pray. I know how to war. I know how to wait on God and hear things. And I don't just go in like a bull in a china shop. I have in years past. <laughs> and, but we learn as we're going along. But this year, coming into the season, I'm so aware that there are keys that God are going to give us in the place of rest and worship. And it all comes down to worship. This is what we just did now. Those songs give you that breath. And on a daily basis, you're giving that. And God does things in those moments of exchange of weakness that actually give us the power to bring heaven on earth into that situation that we could never strive to do. And we step back and we think, how did this happen? How did this door open? How did this kid come right in this area? How did this marriage come right? And it's actually not because you did all that. It's the presence of God and the absolute dependence and reliance on Jesus. I read a book while I was on, um, I'm diversing, but I'm just speaking from my heart today because I really wanted to come in today out of what God's been doing in me, not just plan a big, you know, sermon, but just share from my heart. But I read a book um, on, on holiday by a very famous worship leader who actually I followed many, many years back. And he actually, he was a warrior and actually mid, mid a shouting session, and you're never going to stop me shouting. So let's just put that, somebody say, thank God she's going to stop shouting. That ain't going to happen um, because Jesus is, God has gone up with a shout, okay? So we just, we coming back with a shout, 1 Thessalonians 5.14. The trumpet will sound. He's, he's coming back with a shout. So you ain't going to shut me up. But I'm sure I've done some shouting just to flipping, just move something with physical, you know, I'm sure that there's been times when I've been in the flesh um, as it was. But he was talking about he was in a shouting session and he lost his voice and it hasn't come back. And this is 20 years ago. He actually, the, he, was, he led in this area, famous worship leader, and suddenly his voice was gone. He went for the op. He did the whole thing. And he talks about the, the absolute anger and frustration. He said everything bad came out of him in that next season. Because you think, I've been doing this for you. I was in the middle of a shout to bring the glory down. And have you ever noticed how God just doesn't do stuff how we think? You can pray. You can, you know, you can actually literally strain. And things... As you move into the as it is in heaven, things unfold in that place of rest. And often it's when we come to the end of ourselves. Do I hear a hallelujah? We actually come to the end of ourselves. And this guy actually wrote this book, and I'm telling you, it was hitting something in me. And now I don't know why for him that happened. Um, and I remember thinking of him when I went off to the um, ear, nose, and throat person last year because I'd had particular strain in my throat and I thought I had a node and he did that thing and looked down he says well whatever you're doing is good because your throat's perfect I said thank you Jesus I think he gave me a bionic larynx <laughs> amen sister um, a bionic larynx because I've been through all of it you know there are many years back you guys have got it easy we had warfare we were shouting and like we remember those times Sherry we were just travailing and we it was all about the voice you know and he just said he came to everything. He searched his heart for hidden sin. 
And he actually said he became very vulnerable in that time as well because he thought, you know, oh, well, I've served you. You're doing nothing for me. You know, sort of just all of, and he's honest about all of these things. And if we have to be honest about our humanity, if you lose your voice in warfare leading the body of Christ, you're going to say, God, where are you? And I want to encourage you with this in your situations today because there are those situations where we're saying, any time now, Jesus. You know, um, we went through a home invasion. Uh, I've spoken to you about this before with guns pointed at our heads and knives and tied up. And in that moment, I was saying, any time now, God. And the angels did not appear. Well, we didn't see them. They were obviously there. <laughs> but they didn't just come and, you know, like you hear in those stories where the guns were, the bullets were deflected and everything. We actually stood there. We went through the fear for one hour. And that was a heck of a thing. And we weren't magically lifted out of it. We had to walk through and bring. Now, the open heaven in that situation was taking what the word said, going to the doctor, applying it, overcoming fear in that situation, and actually starting to pray for our community with a power and authority that we didn't have before, forgiving and actually moving into that area where we had authority. The open heaven in that situation was actually applying the word of God to our lives. And it didn't come by just the next day we woke up and said, that didn't worry us. We had to be real about the trauma. We had to go through all of these things where we actually had to look at our humanity but realize what was the open heaven in that. And the number one thing was for my children, our children, to stand and see me saying, you will not blame God for this. This is not God's fault. God was with us in that. Because, I mean, remember my son just saying, how could Satan just walk into our house here? How could this happen? And going through all these, it's always the questions about the goodness of God. And so we, we realize that these, these areas of our life that we actually, we, we apply. You don't know what you're doing right now, which is you might be looking for something more spectacular. But just you coming week after week, pushing in, going to connect group. Supporting that is open heaven in your situation, overcoming addictions, overcoming areas of depression and anxiety by saying, I'm not going to be ruled by the as it is anymore in the world. I don't care if there was a history of, of this in my family line, and often there is. Um, we are cut free from that when under the open heaven, we are citizens of a higher realm. And your children need to come into that. Amen. Our children and our children's children are going to walk in a greater understanding as we pioneer the way. And so, you know, we know that Jesus, heaven on earth is a culture of glory, worship, honor, wealth, praise, community. You know, I loved what Darren did this morning, just talking us to be sensitive to each other. Because in heaven, I'm sure they don't ignore each other and just leave the meetings and go home and do their own thing. It's community. You know, everybody, and there's no gossip in heaven, okay, so it's nice. You just can be yourself. It doesn't matter. There'll be murderers. There'll be whoever will be up there, and it's a culture of honor. So do you, you see how God is bringing this down in our, when we, we do what we did today, just thinking about somebody taking a moment to extend the open heaven by just actually opening up that community aspect, power, blessing, health, peace to this fallen world. And so God tells us, I want you to release. This is not coming down like close encounters of the third kind in a spaceship. This is coming down through you. This open heaven is coming down. It's not ethereal. It is real kingdom life within you being extended on a daily basis. It's the way you speak to unbelievers in the workplace, the way you show kindness, gentleness. It's the way you raise your children. Now, I'm telling you today, and I've seen this with Charlene, and I'm really, like, impressed with this church. I've looked at the way they've raised those kids in a very secular school situation and with kingdom and Jesus first. And it's affecting their lives to be powerful. And you can get kids who go off, like my own, to a Christian school. And I mean, my middle child has said, I'll never send my kid to a Christian school. Casey, she's a bit of, she's the creative one, so she didn't like being in that. But that's okay, that's her. But if they don't live that, 
and they go into the world as it is in the world. What's, you know, the use? But just looking at the way you're training your children in this environment with the as it is in heaven. We, we live, you know, teaching our kids, you live in a culture of honor. You live in a culture of blessing and kindness. You live in a culture of community. You actually live that, and it's authority. You have authority. You're not scared of the darkness at school because you actually have Jesus within you, and you're actually going to get to the place where you're not running away from the baddies. You're actually running towards them to actually be compassionate. That's the as it is in heaven. Whereas we were raised, I was raised in the church. We were scared of the world. We were scared of anything that was darkness, but we're, we're looking at just the kingdom of God in us. So I want to just, uh, as I come to a close, I want to talk about the two kingdoms that we have to understand and we have to settle in our heart is that the, rea- the absolute reality is that there are two unseen kingdoms. It's not just the heaven on earth. There is a demonic kingdom at work, isn't there? And the, there's a kingdom of heaven so glorious, and then there's a kingdom of darkness and corruption, which has actually been manifesting since the fall, and it's through every sphere of life. It's in, it's in everything, government, media, arts, entertainment, every sphere of life, you can see that contrast kingdom. Am I right? And it's actually, we're realizing we have to actually, you know, what I said at the beginning uh, what I actually meant to say is we have to choose what kingdom we're going to actually align ourselves with. We can't be straddling two. So we've got to choose that and teach our children we are choosing the kingdom of heaven, not darkness. We have to pursue that kingdom with all of our heart because it doesn't just happen. Que sera. You've got to pursue it. And then you've got to receive the kingdom. And actually, sometimes you have to receive the kingdom like a child just in humility and simplicity. It's not some big, dramatic thing. It's receiving by faith the kingdom of God. And so that choosing first to realize the spiritual reality that there's two kingdoms. And this is really, uh, and I want to challenge you, what are you actively choosing this year in your spiritual life? And this doesn't mean um, there's that many dramatic changes, but it means that when you walk out of here today, every situation that you judge is judged in that light. I choose the kingdom of light as opposed to the kingdom of darkness. Now, that might not mean something like I'm not going to murder someone or steal something, but it could be anxiety is part of that kingdom of darkness. It could be uh, slander or anything that is part of that by choosing We are not going to be part of that. We're choosing heaven on earth. We're choosing to release the open heaven. We're choosing um, lack. We're choosing to actually honor God, obey God in this situation when we feel like just losing it. And we all face those things every day, whether it be financial. If you're under financial pressure, and let's face it, the world, we're looking at, I know that they just announced a recession in South Africa. It wasn't a great week. You know, you've got coronavirus, you've got corruption and recession. Woohoo, you know, as it is in South Africa. It's not great right now. So what do we do? And, and as one who leads the prayer meetings, let me tell you, I have to choose how I'm going to lead God's people to pray into that. Because if I say, let's just all go and hide in the tribulation cave, pack our tribulation lunches, and actually like clean all the toilet paper off the shelves like they're doing here. And let's just not come out because that's what you, the challenge is as it is in this world. In South Africa, we have this war constantly. What are you going to choose? And you're leading God's people. So you better be leading them up in faith. We're choosing the open heaven in this situation. And let me tell you, that's not easy every day when, when the other, the news is darkness. But the reality is, if we're not going to give God space, like you said, to move, even just the tithe, the offering, is we're giving God a platform to move in with the open heaven. And these tiny little things that open a door that no man can shut. When God opens a door over these kids' lives, when God opens a door in community, when God opens a door in this, in this nation, and I look at it in my own nation right now, just being in Australia on, on sabbatical. And Australia, one of the strongest economies in the world, prosperous nation where they really don't believe. They've had fires 
they've had, you know, anybody see those satellite pictures of Australia burning up? And I actually thought of Smith Wigglesworth's last prophecy they said he gave was that Australia would be the last nation to experience the fire of God and revival. Well, I was, you know, I thought this is coming now because from that nation and then they've had floods. I arrived at my sister in Sydney's home one week. It wasn't South Africa with load shedding. It was one week without a power in one of the largest cities in the world. I mean, that's pretty end of the world stuff, isn't it? It's like, and no power because of floodings after the fire. And then coronavirus and all of their main trade is, you know, with China. And half of China lives in Australia. So, you know, you're looking at a nation being shaken And actually people who, and all of these stories, I don't know if you followed on Facebook, of people actually saying, is there a God? Because I'm I'm a bit scared now. Some of these things, I'm not saying God sends it, but some of these things make people start to think about what kingdom they're choosing. You know, you're not, and and I want to encourage you, if you've got any family who are not serving God, start to pray that God just opens their eyes, that they ask the questions in in this time, that we need to be choosing that kingdom. So God needs you to actively choose this year which, what is the center on which your lives turn as a believer? Is it open heaven and kingdom of heaven or is it the as it is in the world and the way it's already it's been done? And, you know, we, we can say it at the big bad world, but some things that have been done in the church can be worldly as well. So we're breaking out of all those things. And some of the things that have been put on us have been worldly. So we're breaking out of as it is in this world. And so God wants to manifest. The word manifest means to make it clear or obvious to the eye or mind through signs and actions. So that means in your life today, God wants to make it clear through signs and actions that he is working in your life. Anybody up for that? I'm up for that. Very clear that he is with you. He's surrounding you, but not only that, he's in you, and he's actually bringing breakthrough. And um, so the kingdom of God encompasses the realm where the supernatural is natural. And, you know, that's, that's something we have to get our heads around, especially in a, also in a nation where you don't want to be too crazy or you don't want to do anything that's actually not conservatives. But the kingdom of God encompasses a realm where the supernatural becomes natural in our lives, which starts to mean that we have testimonies all the time of something supernatural happening because heaven appears in that situation. Amen? We welcome that, that this is impossible. This situation was not happening. And as I rested in God and obeyed his word, the door opened and we saw suddenly that appearance. And, you know, this kingdom culture is in direct opposition to the way the world thinks. And if you look at Noah, Abraham, Joseph, Joseph, Moses, David, all those described in the heroes, you know, hall of fame in, in Hebrews, all of those guys discerned and responded to God like believing heaven on earth, not as it is in this world. They all got their names written down because they chose to choose the spiritual realm over the, over the natural secular thing. They chose to step out in God and they were pioneers in a culture that did that. And so even though we know that the, the seen world is a world of conflict, I want to say this today as I close. God always, and listen to this, get this into your heart today, because I know that if you're like me, if you're like us, if you're like our nation, if our family, all the situations that we could list right now that look like the as it is in this world, God always has a response, a strategy of restoration to be applied through his people who think and act on what he says. Do you hear that today? There is always a strategy of restoration for every situation that you can face in the world. Isn't that incredible? There is not one thing that you can bring to Jesus today as you look at him, as you drop, some of you just need to drop your baggage. You think, I've done, I'm done with this. I have, I have strived I have believed what I thought I was believing. And Jesus, I actually just come to your face, not the formula. I'm coming to your face. I'm turning my face upon you and looking full into your wonderful ways. And I actually just looking and letting go of these situations. But there is always a response. And this is 
God's answer to the nations in this end time. There is always a response, a strategy of restoration to be applied by God's people who listen and act. So that means we can't go off doing our own thing. We have to listen and act on what he says, and he can restore any situation. And I've seen this over and over again. I've seen it in my life. I've seen it in, um, in, in things that we're, situ- uh, that we're looking at in nations. But our active choice in that moment is so important. So we have to pursue heaven on earth. And I want to say this. Where there's, what is an open heaven so that you can know what God is saying You know, it's lovely to have the open heaven. That's what we're believing for this year. But what is an open heaven? It's where there's a nearness of heaven to earth. There's a a sense of that. Things start to change your perspective. The way you think about things in this coming year, I'm challenging you to invite that to where you don't think. An open heaven is that you have a nearness, more of a nearness to what heaven thinks than you did before. Are you ready for that? That you respond differently in a situation. What does heaven say about this? I know what my brain is saying and what my bank book's saying. There's a sense of God's presence. We walked into it this morning where we know that worship, we start to look at Jesus and we can have that in our cars with our CDs on. We can have it everywhere, but there is a sense of presence. There's a, listen to this, there's a greater clarity of thought in God's perspective. Have you ever got to the place where you just don't know and it's actually very strong when you come into this nation. You actually have to, sometimes you've got to strain your brain to think clearly. Anybody, I mean, maybe it's just us, South Africa. But you actually have to pray to get clarity. Because there's such, a, there's an oppressing anti-God thing. And, but when there's an open heaven, and I want you to believe for that, His Church London, there's a greater clarity of thought with God's perspective on things. You start to get a revelation Like, this is what God's saying and doing, so we're actually okay. We can stick with this no matter what's going on out there. And worship releases that because, you know, it actually brings you into the thoughts of heaven. Worship brings heaven down. You can choose to believe what God says. That's why the songs are so important. You look at the what we're singing today. You know, you look, if you start to believe that, it will actually change your perspective and bring you into that clarity. There is a clarity and purity of hearts and minds that is unusual. People think for themselves, listen for this, and are not dominated or influenced by the spirit of the day or the spirit that is dominance in a certain geographical area under an open heaven. So you won't come under the spirit that is operating here because you have a clarity. You're citizens of heaven. So you're actually, you might be a UK citizen, but you're a kingdom citizen So you don't come under that thing that's operating. Isn't that exciting, actually, for the church? I don't know how we're going to survive without that, actually. I don't know how we've survived in South Africa without believing that. Because I could be on the first plane out to Australia, you know, where you actually, it just feels a whole lot safer. And, but I cannot, if God is not saying to me to move, I cannot come under that. I have to think clearly under that and not be dominated by the spirit that has dominance in South Africa, you know, at this time. And there's also in an open heaven an excitement and anticipation for what's about to happen. So you actually, you know, we can actually lose that and you need to be careful of that in a church where you've been faithfully doing things for so long. You can lose the excitement, but when there's an open heaven, you actually have an excitement. Something's about to happen and you start to nurture that. So you actually live in a continual awareness of, um, but if you, and I want to challenge you with this, if you live with a continual awareness of darkness that exists over your city, sometimes you'll, that darkness, you'll think it's just part of your life. You'll think it's you that's under that. It's your problem. And I want to challenge you because I would say that's a, a strategy of the enemy in this nation. If you're living under that, it can become part of your thinking and you actually need to separate yourself and to wake up to the kingdom of God. Amen? So you, if, you're, if you're subject to anxiety or depression, you need to be girded about, surrounded, so that you don't come under that darkness. Because an open heaven means you're overcoming that, even though you had it in the past. You know, and as I close with this, if, you know, 
What God is asking us to do in this season is to wake up every morning with a new confidence that we're under an open heaven, the as it is in heaven, and we choose that we pursue that and we become aware of it. And I actually wrote here, if you knew that somebody deposited a lot of money in your account, you'll have confidence to actually think bigger and spend more, won't you? You know, you look at your bank account and there's more, yippee, what a feeling. You'll have a lot more confidence. But guess what? The open heaven is a huge deposit in your life. So you wake up every morning to choose with confidence to pursue. And it won't happen sometimes straight away, but you know that it's coming. And you actually have to receive it by faith. So receiving is part of the thing. You can pursue it, but receiving it is the next step because you have to do that in rest and in confidence where, you're, where the, you're, the things that you're thinking shut up and shut down and the Word of God becomes preeminent. The clarity of heaven becomes preeminent. And let me tell you, you'll probably walk out of here today and be tested with the first opportunity at these things. And so God, he says, we actually have to enter into rest. So that means today, whatever you're struggling with this week, I'm going to just give you the, the open heaven is for you to enter into the rest in that situation by applying and being obedient to the word of God and then giving it over to him and actually just choosing to have clarity in that area and to hold on. Amen. So we have to let go. We have to ex- sometimes just accept. I'm so glad to be in this season where actually people can actually be open and accept. You know, I was raised where you shut up about your anxieties or you shut up about what was going on behind closed doors or you shut up about things that were going on in people's lives or your struggles. And we're living in a time where we don't have to do that. We can actually open We can actually look within. Is there any rebellion in me? Have I actually, the way I react, am I actually my own worst enemy against heaven? Anybody ever felt like that? You actually can be your own worst enemy. Amen? Just don't be shy about that today because I've got the t-shirt with that. But if you let that strangle you, if you let that be the loudest voice, see, as it is, you will not see the kingdom come. And humble yourself. Say, God, this is me. I am sometimes my own worst enemy, but I am determined to actually have this. So if Mike and Dahlia can come up and we'll close. If you want to stand with me right now, I want to read this Psalm 23. Just play whatever you want to play, bud. (laughs) Anointed. Let's read Psalm 23 over us today. I actually always, you know, you ever seen any of those Wallace and Gromit movies with the sheep in, those funny guys, and they're all over the place, and they're just fighting, you know. I always get an image of this, and me probably being one of those sheep. So he actually says in the message, God, my shepherd, I don't need a thing. You have bedded me down. And I want to say to you today, don't make God have to come after you this year. Don't make him have to, you make me. In one of the translations, you make me lie down. Don't make him have to do that. Just lie down. <laughs> you know, it's like those bad sheep just struggling, running around and, and striving and questioning and disappointment, disillusionment, rebellion. We can question. Don't question the character of God. The as it is in heaven over your life is favor and good. God is good doesn't mean we get what we want instantly, but don't let a shadow of doubt come into your heart and mind this year on the as it is in heaven for you. It is good. It is favor. It is rest. It is power. It is your children and your children's children serving God, fulfilling your inheritance. But don't make him have to come and, you know, literally take the rod and the staff and give you a whack and make you lie down. Lie down. And just say, God, I'm actually helpless here. I actually have no strength for this. No, I've done it and I have no strategy for this. This is what I'm saying over my life. 31 years in ministry at his church. And I'm going in like a child back into that job to say, God, I'm not carrying all that I have before. I want your freshness in my leadership. I want your freshness in my life. I don't want to presume 
that I know anything. I'm going to lie down with a little help from my pastor telling me to lie down and rest, rest, rest. So that that next six years in the Sabbath is healthy and whole and strong, coming out of even years and years of sickness or anxiety, that I can find that today and you can find that in this place of rest. You can be free and have that next cycle of the, of the sabbatical, of the, of the Sabbath rest where you're actually finding God. He said, you bedded me down in lush meadows. You find me quiet pools to drink from. True to your word, you let me catch my breath and send me in the right direction. And that's the thing. We have to, let, we have to catch our breath first so before we go in the right direction. And even when the way goes through Death Valley, I'm not afraid when you walk up my side. Your trusty shepherd's crook makes me feel secure. You serve me a six-course dinner right in front of my enemies. And that's a key right now for you in the UK. Right in the pre for anywhere in the body of Christ. But for us right now, God is not isolating us. He's serving you a six-course meal in the presence of your enemies. And that's a whole different perspective in your life. He doesn't take us off to the mountains to hide us. He actually displays His glory through us. You revive my drooping head. My cup brims with blessing. Your beauty and love chase after me every day of my life. And this is the open heaven. He says, I'm back home in the house of God for the rest of my life. That is your direction today. That is your end. Isn't that incredible? That is your kingdom of heaven but starting now, you're not going to just get there. We're not called to just get there and think, wow, we arrived in heaven. We're going to know heaven because we've started to live it here with greater clarity. We're going to know what heaven smells like, looks like, what the health of it is, the honor of it, the community of it, the joy of it, the celebration of it. We said today the, the absolute health of heaven in our homes and our children's lives the absolute healing and honor, the way we treat each other. Let's not live even in His church, London, as, he, as it is in this world, isolated, selfish, all about us, and broken and never getting healed. It's not wrong to be broken, but when you come to that, those pastures, He will restore you. He wants to restore you. Amen? So, Father, I thank You today that we just... Right now, I just release, Father, just by faith on the people, just a greater clarity of heaven on earth for this church, for each individual, for families. And Lord, I know that you're really doing a work in families, and sometimes uh, the ugly just has to come out, God, so that we can actually say we need you, Jesus. We haven't got it together, and you are so faithful and so merciful. And I want you to just take a moment today because it really is. I mean, anywhere we go in the world today and even in churches, there's stuff in our hearts, there's anxieties, that's a given. But it might just be something that you struggle with that, that God is actually trying to make you lay down in right now in the pasture and to let go of it. Things that are really, I just feel that today, things that are really desires of your heart that have, you've grown hopeless in, that hope deferred makes you sick in. And that is a real test. You know, when God doesn't come through exactly as you think, that can be a, such a test against His name. And right now, even just lie down in that thing. Just let it go and let heaven come into that space right now. Some of you, God's just been waiting for that moment where you just actually rest in that. And you say, Jesus, you love me. You know me, so I'm going to actually let go right now. In this Sabbath, not just setting a day apart, but my heart apart for rest. And so, Jesus, I thank you. We pray it right now over this church. We pray it over every individual, every, every one of the children of this church, God, that they would know the clarity of heaven. And we just thank you right now that you breathe heaven into our individual lives. I pray for that person in this place today that often has contemplated suicide. Lord God, and just actually known that as it is in this world, just the intense anxiety and darkness. Right now in Jesus' name, I thank you that that, that pattern is broken under 
Lord God, the as it is in heaven, you say, I give you a sound mind, peace, self-control. You say in the middle of the, sh- of the shadow of death even, I lead you and I give you peace. And I not only give you peace, I give you joy and laughter and absolute celebration. And so Jesus, I thank you that we just take this for this week in our lives. We will appropriate heaven on earth at every opportunity, every conversation, every business deal, every decision with our kids and with our future, everything we say as it is in heaven. Our Father, holy, hallowed is thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Bless you guys.